not uh, currently uh, having the microphone put on, but it's my pleasure to present Gabriel Kubi, a German sociologist, a mother and a writer. You may know some of her daughters. Uh, one of them is Sofia Kubi, who works in Brussels to stand behind families. She's the author of the book, The Global Sexual Revolution, Destruction of Freedom on Behalf of, uh, of Freedom. It's just been translated into Spanish, and uh, actually it's being sold back here if we haven't run out of co copies. Gabriel was baptized in the Evangelic Church, but she experienced an inner transformation that led her to convert to Catholicism. In 2008, she wrote Gender Revolution, Relativism in Action, in which she denounced the maneuvers to destroy the family funded on the difference between men and women. QV will explain in her talk how sexual revolution is uh, really distorting the life of people and the configuration of our societies and how they try to impose this ideology in a totalitarian fashion. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Ignacio. I'm very proud and honored to be invited to this event, this conference on sex and gender. It really is unique. Uh, it is even very difficult to stage a conference like this. Uh, you sometimes don't even find a venue where you can do it. Uh, this conference is a marathon in attention. Uh, I hope you are not too tired to continue to listen to two talks. Uh, for myself, I usually drop down at this time of the day if I have to listen all the time. But it's so interesting that I actually could keep my attention. And I'm extremely thankful for being filled with all this scientific knowledge uh, to have a sound foundation for our struggle and our opposition. I'm greeting also all the listeners online. I have heard it's 5,000. And I'm sure there are also LGBT activists amongst these 5,000s. And I greet you especially. And I hope that you are listening to all these talks because there's something in it for your own life. And to have a fulfilled and happy life, which we all strive for, this life needs to be founded on truth. And if we deviate from it, if we create an ideology which denies truth, we in our own personal life will have to pay the price. So I invite everybody to listen to the voice of truth, uh, which can be uh, expounded in scientific terms, in religious terms, uh, and by our own witness. In the middle of the 14th century, the Ottoman Sultan founded the elite corps of the Janissaries, who spread terror across Europe for several centuries in order to subjugate their Christian neighbors. A chief way of recruiting troops was by enslaving subjugated people. With adults, this causes problems of loyalty, whereas children can be remolded and trained to serve the interests of the warlords. Therefore, the Janissaries kidnapped the children of the Christians, or, after they had conquered a Christian territory, they forced Christian families to hand over a certain percentage of their sons and daughters. There's even a German word for this. It's called Knabenlese, a selection of boys which hadn't had to be handed over to the Muslim oppressors. The uprooted children were converted to Muslim faith by force, received an intense military training, and were then ready to join the Janissaries elite troops to fight against Christians. Dear friends, we are living in a similar kind of war. The enemies of Christianity and Christian culture are stealing our children by hedonistic, obligatory sexualization in kindergarten and schools by force of state. What used to be considered as sodomy, perversity, and grave sin, words which we are not allowed to use anymore, 
is now taught to our children in kindergarten and school. In our time, the enemies of a life in accordance with the dignity of the human person don't come on horses. They don't have daggers in their robes, but they use every kind of manipulation and lie to destroy the Christian foundation of the magnificent European culture. Whoever stands up to protect marriage and family, and they're all, I suppose we are all doing this, uh, and the well-being of the next generation will be threatened with social ostracism, the ruin of material existence, mobbing and bullying through social media, and increasingly criminalization by force of newly invented laws. We heard about the equality law, which is on the table of parliament in your country, in Spain, and you must ra rise against it because it distorts the, the legal order, it distorts democracy, it is a steep path into a new kind of totalitarianism. You might be taken aback by this comparison with the Janissaries. Don't our children need inform, to be informed about sexuality in our time, immersed in sexual images and to, films and pornography? Should they not learn not to discriminate homosexuals, bisexuals, transsexuals at an early age? Yes, they should be taught not to bully, not to discriminate. And doctor, I'm thankful to Dr. Critella for telling us that this does not mean that they have to be taught to accept all kinds of gender deviances. They have to be taught in the right way at the right age. For what, at the right age. But what is the right way to teach them about sexuality? I think we all know to prepare the next generation for marriage and family because enduring love and belonging to an unbroken family is the longing in every human heart. George Orwell said, quote, we have sunk so deep that the articulation of the obvious is the first duty of an intelligent man. So let me state a few facts that are obvious to everyone. First, family is built upon the monogamous marriage of one man and one woman who give birth to children and create the environment in which they can grow up to be loving, achieving individuals who themselves will build families and have their own children. Two, every child, every single person in this room when they were a child, and every single person listening to this program, as a child wanted their biological parents to stay together for life. If the parents don't, it scars the soul of the children for life. Three, the gift of sexuality has, as we all know, two functions, reproduction and the loving unity of man and woman in the sexual act. If we systematically sever the sexual act from her creation, we get into trouble as individual, as couple, as society. The demographic crisis, which means it is a slow, collective suicide is the logical consequence. If we sever the sexual act from the loving unity of man and woman in marriage, family breaks down. These three facts are obvious, but they cannot be perceived and put into practice if a person lives in sexual sin. The famous German theologian Romano Guardini said, quote, the logic of evil is this, sin leads to delusion, delusion leads to more sin, and more sin leads to more delusion. There have been all the time these questions, how is this madness possible? How can this 
craze actually get hold in our temper and our present society. And I think one reason is that many, many people are immersed in different kinds, all sorts of kinds of sexual sin, which actually blinds our vision so that we cannot see clearly. Our society has demolished all moral barriers of sexuality. Fifty Shades of Grey is the all-time most successful book of Amazon. Now the third film is in the cinemas, turning millions and millions of people, young people, on to sadomasochistic sex. The subtitle of the film now in the cinemas is Liberated Lust. We don't need liberated lust. Leading into sexual addiction, addiction is the absolute opposite of freedom, and into an abyss of sexual abuse of one's own body and the body of another person. We are one whole person of spirit, mind, and body, and our dignity demands integrity of spirit, mind, and body. Only then can the gift of sexuality become a means to life and love as intended by our Creator. For that, we need control of our powerful sexual drive. Love means the gift of oneself to the other, of the whole person, of body, mind, and spirit. The longing for this kind of love is in the heart of every person. But for the fulfillment of this longing, it needs education. It needs education in virtue. We have heard that concept, which we hardly ever hear, not here, not even in church, we have heard it by you. We need education in virtue. A virtue is Catechism of the Catholic Church, a habitual and firm disposition to do good. Our culture is built on the exercise of virtue by our forefathers and our foremothers. They have paid the price for this magnificent European culture by sacrifice of immediate satisfaction to a higher aim. Liberated lust is the opposite. Our generation is now destroying the Christian European culture by the liberation of lust. The body desires lust, the heart longs for love. To teach the body to speak the language of love, the human person must learn the virtue of chastity. The word chastity comes from the Latin word custus, meaning pure. It is part of the cardinal virtue of temperance. And the catechism chastity is defined as the successful integration of sexuality within the person and thus the inner unity of man in his bodily and spiritual being. Unquote, catechism of the Catholic Church. When have you last heard the word chastity? You don't find it in the media. When have you last heard it in a, a church sermon? It sounds old-fashioned, outdated, completely out of step with our time. Yes, it is. Our society has succumbed to the hedonistic view of sexuality. Do whatever satisfies your lust with a man or a woman or both or whatever else. From the cradle to the grave. That was the liberation, the sexual liberation for which the 1968 movement fought, intellectually powered by the philosophers of the Frankfurt School. We have heard this very, very interesting talk of August, Augustine uh, uh, this morning. Um, okay, now I have a... I have a... Okay, this is 1968. If you look closely, you may find me somewhere there. <clears throat> One of them, 
member of the Frankfurt School was Herbert Marcuse, who wrote the book you also heard about him this morning, Eros and Civilization. He proclaimed the poisonous utopia, the liberation of lust, will create a paradisical society without power. Here you see the liberation of lust. These people form the so-called Kommune 1 in West Berlin uh, and proclaimed sex with anybody, especially sex with children, in front of children, and sex of children. The Green Party in Germany, until the 90s, proposed legislation in parliaments to legalize sex of adults with children. It came to the open just recently. They stand in front of the press, they nod their head and say it was a fault, and that's it. That's it for the media. No fuss is made about it. What do we see 50 years later? Lust has been liberated, but where is paradise? Instead, broken marriages, broken families, 20% single mothers, most of them in poverty, sex outside marriage being the norm, a third of children in kindergarten with deficiencies of language and psychological disturbances, pornography and addiction by the millions, and pornography consumption by the smartphone generation. The astonishing fact is the burden of suffering and cultural decay that the sexual revolution creates is obvious, but society at large seems to have lost the capacity to convert, the con lost, the, lost the capacity of the population of Nineveh when Jonah walked into the town, walked through it for three days because it was so big and said, convert from your sins. And the king heard it and he proclaimed a period of fasting and the, the English word for buße, fasting and, and, and remorseful action, I don't know the English word, uh, for people and animals. Yeah? We do not have this capacity anymore, although we see the detrimental effects of this global sexual revolution everywhere. But a late awakening is taking place and this conference is a sign for that in many countries uh, in Europe and in the USA. What is propagated to our children in kindergarten and school is a hedonistic concept of sexuality. Hedonism is a school of thought that sees pleasure as the utmost, as the most important good of human life. A hedonist strives to maximize pleasure and minimize pain. Hedonism and sexuality means do everything that maximizes your lust at any age and with any person you feel attracted to, man or woman or both. All sexual activities are of equal value. Heterosexuality, gay, lesbian, bi, transsexuality, and any kind of perversion like sadomasochism. Change your sex if that feels good to you. Maybe your brain is stuck in the wrong body. According to the 2010 report of the UN Special Rapporteur on the right to education, the goal of comprehensive sexual education should be, quote, pleasure in and enjoyment of sexuality, abolishing guilt feelings about eroticism. So it's a totally, the UN has a totally hedonistic concept of sexuality, which is this forcing into the 196 member states of the United Nations. There's only one limitation left of sexual activity, the principle of consent. Only do what your sexual partner or your sexual partners agree to. But how can that principle work if the sexual drive is out of control? 
and it does not work as pornography addiction and the pervasive sexual abuse in the midst of our societies show. The figures of sexual abuse are just horrendous. Uh, how many girls and how many, it's more, it hits more the girls. I think every sixth girl or something like this uh, has been a victim of sexual abuse. Where's the outcry? Where's the severe effort of our governments and international institutions to do something about this? But it is not there because it needs a purification of the whole of our society. Woe to anybody who objects to this hedonistic idea, who points to the risks, to the lost dreams, to the severe consequences of this concept. Get rid of him, he's intolerant, homophobic, bigot, discriminating, hateful. And this is a lie. Those of us who stand up against the ruinous path of hedonism do it out of love for our fellow human beings, love for our children and responsibility for our future. The hedonistic approach of sexuality devoid of any moral standards is promoted and forced into school curricula by the United Nations and its sub-agencies, the World Health Organization, UNICEF, United Nations Population Fund, by the European Union and its web of sub-organizations by global NGOs like IPPF and of course all the LGBT organizations. The greatest IPPF, as you know, the greatest abortion undertaker of this world who makes money by selling organs of aborted babies. Their propaganda deludes the minds of people. Yes, we want to responsibly plan the size of our families. Yes, we want to be healthy. Yes, we want to educate our children in the right use of sexuality to prepare them for, mar to prepare them for marriage and family. I thought I had three quarters of an hour. Ignacio, I thought I, I had three quarters of an hour. But I just started at quarter past five. Huh? How much more? A quarter of an hour. Thank you. Okay. Not okay. Okay. Good. So, what do we do? Uh, no. Let us have a look at the content of sex, a comprehensive sexual education as put forward in official documents of the World Health Organization (EPPF), etc. What I'm describing is not happening in every school and every kindergarten, but it is what global national organizations promote. Encouraging masturbation from babyhood onwards, presentation of different types of sexual orientation as equally valid, LGBTIQ, presentation of broken families as equally valid types of families, single family, patchwork family, rainbow family, they are all broken families with incredible suffering incurred by the people who live in these broken families. Children books, we heard about that, where the prince marries the prince, and it is proposed to children by a fairy, only you know what your sex is. Speak to somebody whom you trust about it. This is put into children books, this is put towards uh, given in the hands of our children and the intentional destabilization of the identity of boy and girl and children. And I, I just said that. I will now show you some pictures from two German books on sexual education. The first one is called Lisa and Jan. Here it is. Uh, the main author is Uwe Sielert. He's professor for sexual pedagogics in a university in Germany, Kiel. He is the kind of pope of the whole uh, sexual education movement. This book has been on the market for more than 20 years. It did have some criticism and it is now not available. Uh, so, but it is published in a very renowned uh, uh, publisher Bells Verlag. Um, uh, 
it, this is not from the book. I'm just showing this to you. Probably most of us would like our children to play board games like this. In this book, there's a different way of playing go board games, namely like this. This is in this book, yeah? This is advice. The book is, is a, a, a book for parents and children. Probably we would like our little uh, girls to have this kind of friendship. In the book, it is this. The girl is a bit bigger, boy and girl naked. Probably we would enjoy family life like this. In the book, this is the idea of family enjoyment. One has to bound down, I think. I s okay, it works. Yeah. Uh, this kind of thing, yeah? And you see, children in the book, you see a child watching the sexual act of the parents and so on. Probably would like to our children to play with this kind of uh, toys. Uh, now, the next, uh, the next objects are not from the book, but they are used in comprehensive sexual education. And not with this kind of thing. The little hands of our children are given plastic material to form penises. Or vaginas. Here we are. This is kindergarten material to get the hands of our little children acquainted to touch sexual organs. What is this in the background with pedophilia? Are they not being prepared for, for uh, pedophile acts? Or this kind of thing, it's a different kind of, of material, but the same kind of, uh, it's, it's made by, by uh, stuff, by fabric. Okay. In the accompanying booklet to this book, Uwe Sielert says, quote, naturally children discover this pleasure on their own if they are positively caressed ahead of time by their parents. If they don't know at all what lust is, there will also be no sex play. Did you hear that? We have to show children. We have to teach them masturbation. They don't do it by themselves unless they are very deprived emotionally. Yeah, and he says, show your children. This is a straightforward invitation to sexual abuse of children. And I think there is need for uh, legal litigation. All programs of sex education for children teach them masturbation is good for them. They should explore their own body, find out what feels good. They're explicitly taught how to do it in words and graphics. The World Health Organization, together with the German state organization, Bundeszentrale für gesundheitliche Aufklärung, published standards for sexual education in Europe. You can find it uh, in the internet. And it says, teach your children, the first age group from zero to four, masturbation. Why are you so eager, all these activists, to get our children into masturbation from child, from, from toddler age onwards. What is the dynamic of masturbation? The person arouses sexual lust in solitude, imprisoned in his own egotistical self. As the famous journal, uh, German child therapist Christa Mewe says, who has prophetically spoken out against sexualization of children for the last 50 years, only an emotionally deprived child turns to himself to substitute uh, emotional affection with some kind of bodily satisfaction. It can easily become an addiction in children and adults. Sooner or later, it will drive the person to pornography. It will incapac incapacitate the person to experience sexuality as a giving of oneself to another in love. It will be a barrier to harmonious married life. And if we look at 
any aspect of the sexual revolution, we see it has one single aim, to destroy fertility and to destroy procreation and to destroy the family. And I do not believe this is an unwanted side effect of these programs. I think these people are smart. I think they know what they are doing, and I think this is exactly what they want. And I leave it to you to draw the conclusions why the rich and powerful do want this. What happens in school? Children are trained to be contraception experts. It is standard that they practice using condoms in class on plastic penises, uh, selling them the lie of safe sex. Uh, they are asked to distinguish the tastes of different condoms. Uh, the very concrete risks of STDD, sexual transmitted diseases, which are exploding, not despite, but because of this kind of sexualization, are rarely mentioned. Abortion is presented as an easy decision, entirely up to them, a choice without consequences, and the path is open that they do it without their parents even knowing. Thus, IPPF produces their own customers for their abortion industry. The method methods of indoctrination are most sophisticated and manipulative. The CSE material is presented in words, images, and videos which appeal to children, preferably colorful comics and youth slang. The presenters are the friends of the children against the overly strict parents. But at the same time, they draw on the authority of being a teacher and an expert who knows best. Anal and oral sex is presented as normal. This has a very sad consequences. consequence. Cancer in the mouth is now found in a much higher rate in young people than uh, uh, a few decades ago. Activists of IPPF and LGBTIQ organizations have access to the classroom in the absence of the teacher. Homosexual couples and transgender persons enter the classroom and help youth in puberty to come out. And we heard all this now on the transgender issue. The same applies to homosexual issue. Also with homosexuality, there is a time of ambiguity for boys. I read the number of some 20% who in puberty try out and are not quite sure how to, what to make, what sense to make if they have a friendship with a boy. And they outgrow it to above 80%. But then these homosexual couples come into the classroom and say, we understand you, we help you, we help you to come out. Here's our organization, come, we are your friends and we will make you happy. And in reality, they're sending them on a course of life which has severe risks, which are summed up in the reduced life expectancy of a homosexual active lifestyle, which means they have 10 to 20 years less life expectancy. So why are we sending children on this path? The new label for all of this is diversity education. Here's a book published by a respectable publishing house. It's Sexualpädagogik, Pedagogics of Diversity. Uh, it doesn't stop anywhere, yeah? It goes on and on and on and on. And here you see a picture what for them is diversity. This is put to our school children, yeah? This is, this is material for schools and again, this publishing house is one of an established uh, publishing house for educational material, and this is on the market. It, has, it did get opposition, but no removal from positions. You know, nothing happens. Uh, there is no social ostracism if you, if you uh, pour this kind of poison into society. It's just, they, they just step one step back, and as soon as there's no resistance, 
they will step 10 steps forward and go into transgender and, 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 and. Uh, there's a new brochure brought out by the Senate of West Berlin. Uh, it's uh, the new, the new uh, magic word is inclusion. Isn't it good if we include every, everybody? We don't want bullying, we don't want mobbing, we want to be kind to everybody, we want to be a one family, we want to include everybody in the classroom. So inclusion is the new word. Yeah? They're using all these concepts, undermining their meaning, human rights, diversity, uh, tolerance, of course. Um, uh, well, uh, all these concepts, yeah, now, now even inclusion. And the Senate of Berlin just recently came up with a booklet which is distributed to all uh, daycare uh, caretakers uh, for toddlers before school age. It is called Murat, apparently an Islamic name, plays princess. Alex has two mothers and Sophie is now, now called Ben. In plain language, an Islamic boy puts on a princess dress. Alex has two lesbian women as parents and Sophie has decided to be a boy. All this is to be support. No, I do have the microphone, yeah. All this is to be supported uh, by the staff of the, of the daycare institution. Uh, and if there is no child which exhibits any of these deviances, the three, four, five-year-olds still have to be immersed in sexual and gender diversity because, quote, there are children who later in their life will identify as lesbian, gay, or bisexual, or who have no amorous feelings and desire towards the same sex, two, three, four, five years old. This is just, has just come out in Berlin. Uh, one has to know about Berlin. There was a gay mayor, Wovereit, from 2001 to 2014. He brought his people into place. And they're still into place, although there's now a new mayor. And they t t put out these kind of uh, uh, booklets. There is now resistance. Uh, even in the, in the Parliament of Berlin, uh, there, I don't know where it goes to, but there has been at last some resistance. Okay, now I think it's really five minutes. Just the risks of, uh, <laughs> the, the, the risk of, uh, of sexualization of children and teenagers, five points. Teen pregnancy and abortion. 18% of all U.S. abortions are obtained by teenagers. Uh, but one must say it has dropped slightly, the rate of pregnancy, and of course the CSE people say this is our success. It is to a certain degree, but still the number is very high of teenage abortions. Two, epidemic of sexually transmitted diseases, 25% of teenage girls in the USA have STDs, a quarter. Most common are chlamydia infections that can cause sterility for life. Three, higher risks of depression and suicide of teenage boys and girls who are sexually active. Four, reduced academic achievement through early sexual activity. It's no surprise if you are into all this uh, relationship, sexual relationship chaos, how can you learn? Yeah? And use this for something else. It has a different meaning. You learn, you go into the world, you discover the world, you form friendships. That's what youth is about, and not to be drowned into sexual chaos before you can even uh, look straight into the world. Five, weakened ability to bond through disappointment and injury of the soul. And again, it's all one direction, disabilitate uh, children and youth to marriage and family. What can we do? We can do nothing if our own sexual life is in disorder. Order means one simple sentence, sex only within Marriage of man and woman. 
We must live with heart, mind, and body in the truth of man. This is the basis to stand up against the reality of increasingly aggressive and totalitarian sexual revolution. We have to fight for the human right of parents to educate their own children. Oh, let's get rid of this, I'm sorry. Okay. We have to fight for the human right of parents to educate their own children according to their own values, to their own faith. It is the parents who give life to their children and who make enormous sacrifices to bring them up. I'm a mother of three children, I know what I'm speaking about. Parents love their children. The state cannot love your child. It is a natural right not imparted by the state, and the state cannot take it away. And if the state tries to do that, we must rise up. If the power is in the hands of revolutionary activists, they will put their hand on the children to educate them according to their ideological premises. This is happening in our time and is happening to our own children. We need to rise. Manif Portus in France. All of a sudden, there were a million people on the street uh, protesting the same-sex marriage. Uh, it wasn't successful because the socialists were in power, but all these people know why they were there. And they will keep stirring, I hope and I believe. We have to fight, we have to cause trouble, we have to break the silence. It is very often women who have become active, but we need men at the front of this battle. They have to resurrect from the constant, constant, constant um, accusation of feminism that they are nothing else but rapists and predators. This is a lie. And men really have to recover from that and start to doing what is their first obligation in life, protect their families, protect their children, and fight for it. What can you do concretely? Go to the teachers and school directors and make use of your right to be shown the materials of sex education. In Germany, that is a legal right, but you have to fight for it, that, that you actually make use of it. Inform parents about the content of sexual, uh, sexual education. Show them, spread leaflets, spread it by, by digital uh, uh, means. What is actually the content? Because parents look away. They're glad that the school takes care of this, and they don't really know what is going on. Practice civil disobedience. Not just mothers going into school into the, into the parents' evening. Fathers go into school and say, not with my child. It makes a difference if a man says this or if a woman says this. Inform politicians and build up pressure and organize demonstrations. We know how all this works. You know, we have had 68, we have all these movements in so many nations. We know, and we have to take into our hands the protection of our children and the protection of our future. Because this really is, oh, there you see a demonstration in Germany, uh, it's small, it's not like Manif Portus, but it's inspired by Manif Portus uh, against sexual, and this is a happy family, and I think every one of us and every one of the people listening here, in our heart, what we really long for is a happy family, and this society makes it so very, very difficult for us to form a happy family. But every single person who does that in their own life, does, that is the most, the primary and the most important political act you can possibly do. Things are beginning to change. New conservative parties are springing up in many nations. Conservative political leaders are elected. Movements of resistance rise up. 
in Spain, in Germany, in East European countries. Christian renewal movements attract thousands of young people. We, have, we are Christians in this battle. We have to fight in a special uh, spirit. And this spirit is, we do never use evil means to achieve a good aim. This is forbidden. We rather lose the battle instead of doing this. And we are not out because we say, if we exert more power, we will win this battle. We are in the battle because we must, because we have understood the truth of man. Therefore, we fight, and we fight in the spirit of David against Goliath, who says, the battle belongs to the Lord. I thank you very much. <clears throat> thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Gabriel, this is yeah. so you can understand me. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So let's sit down there. And I have a few questions. Yes. Okay. <coughs> Thank you very much. Um, gracias. Muchas gracias, Gabriele. Thank you very much, Gabriel. I have a few questions that I have also received from the audience, so I'm going to get started. Why do some people want to promote sexual revolution in the world and gender ideology? Why are there some people who want to promote uh, the sexual revolution? What's in it for them? <laughs> uh, gender ideology is an advancement of the sexual revolution and it's now the ide ideology driving the sexual revolution. And I think I touched it in my talk. The question came up again and again, and we have to ask the question. Mm -hmm. And I think there is an obvious aim because it all leads to it. The destruction of family leads to a, a reduction of population. That's one, one important uh, aim of the elites of this world, have less people on the planet. Of course, masses of people are a threat to the mighty and powerful. Disabilitate them, make them weak, if we have no families, we, are, if we have no identity. You know, identity is being destroyed. Identity given to human beings, you usually build up identity by three elements. Religion, nation, and family. This is what our ancestors died for. This is why they go into war. This is why the martyrs died for, because for their faith. Because, and this is our identity. We cannot let it go. We give our life for it. And now we are in a process that identity on all these levels is destroyed. And uh, I think it, it's the, the intention. I think they, the, people, the people who are driving this, it's a top-down revolution. It doesn't come. There's no mass movement who say, we need homosexual man marriage. We need a law that we can sh change our sex. It's imposed from top to down. And I think the people who are driving this as I said already, uh, know what they are doing. Uh, they're not stupid, you know, they have strategies and very long-term strategies. What an intelligence to introduce the word gender at the Beijing uh, UN Women Conference in 1995 because they knew we need the word to drive this revolution. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think they know what they are doing and if we are deprived of identity, we are just helpless, a mass of helpless people who can be mani manipulated to anything and who will not have the power to rise up. That's very clear. Okay. Um, two questions are related uh, about education. So I'll, I'll read both. Yes. First, um, in El Reino Unido. In the UK, the government wants to force Catholic schools to teach gender ideology. What should Christian schools do? Be accomplices of this? Should they accept what's being imposed by the government? And I have another question, because in the field of education, there are Christian schools who that don't want to teach gender ideology, and apparently in the UK, they're going to be forced to do so. But there's other Christian schools that uh, may not be so against gender ideology. So uh, 
What do you think of what's happened in uh, Catholic school in uh, Cadiz? Uh, there's been associations pro-equality or pro-human rights that have got into uh, Catholic school, and they're talking about gender ideology, homosexual ideas, and right to abortion. They have even been criticizing uh, the church in school, and they have uh, called it homophobous. What do you think about that? Violent ideology, which is becoming more and more totalitarian, we, all of us, are in the same position as all people before us who were confronted with a totalitarian uh, movement, a movement into totalitarianism. I, as a German, of course, know very much what I'm speaking about. And we were subjected to two, total, both totalitarian ideologies, the, the Nazi ideology and the communist ideology. Both sides of Germany were into this. So it is the same dynamic. And yesterday, we celebrated the day of the decapitation of Hans and Sophie Scholl, who were the members of the White Rose, who rose up in 1944 uh, against the Nazi regime. They just threw leaflets down from the, like here, in, in the university, they threw these leaflets down on which they wrote the truth and fought for, few, uh, for freedom. Four days later, they were separated from their head. Yeah, so they took the risk. That was yesterday, the anniversary of it. We are not at that stage. And this new totalitarianism is very subtle. It comes in the cloak of freedom. That's why I have the subtitle, Destruction of freedom in the name of freedom. It says, liberate your sexuality. How wonderful. Yeah, it's difficult for, uh, for us human beings to really integrate our sexuality into our spirituality and our heart. It is not easy. Yeah, and here come these false prophets who say that. Uh, so we are in the, uh, it's, it's, a, it's different, and we are not aware. We have been so sleepy for such a long time. We did not recognize it. We thought, it's just for a minority. We are tolerant. Let them live however they want. We live our normal Christian life. That was deluding us, and we did not see that what is going on has nothing to do with that, no, has is not really what this minority wants. One figure. Once homosexual same-sex marriage has been legally established, only something like three, maximum six percent of the community of people with a homosexual attraction make use of it. Once they have achieved it, they don't make use of it. So it's about something <coughs> else. And it is about destruction of the concept of family and the family itself. And we didn't realize this, and we have no other choice but to form resistance against it, everyone at his place. And it needs courage. And if you wait longer, the price will go up. It is going up all the time. The price will go up. It needs courage now. And it starts to begin with just standing up and saying, no, I don't believe this. I believe this, and not to be silent. Now, the question about the schools. If you are in a dynamic like this, it enters everything. Uh, as in the, uh, in, in the in Nazi regime, we had the German church, which supported the Nazis. We now have e the Catholic is the stronghold, the Catholic Church is the stronghold, but now we see it's entering even within the church, and this is very, very worrying. And there are, of course, schools. It needs courageous, strong people to resist, and where are they? Yeah, if they are, and there, there are less and less strong people because they are only strong if they have identity. And if they come from broken families, their identity is weak. So where are the strong people who will resist it? There's no other way than to find, and you are doing this for Spain on a very large level, 
uh, and I'm thankful for what you are doing. Uh, okay. It's wonderful. Uh, we have no other choice but to form each one to our ability to speak the truth and to form resistance in our schools. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. For, for a <coughs> civic association, for a movement like after year, or since then, it's much easier to confront this ideology. I mean, because we were born to, you know, fight the culture war. For a school, it's much more difficult. That, that's yeah. my, so it's, I mean, of course we have to confront it, but you know, each one will decide how to do it, no? Obama, the day after the legalization of same-sex marriage in June uh, 2015, mm. he started the bathroom battle. Yeah. This absolute madness, yeah, of saying transgender mm. people can use the private, the shower rooms, the toilets of the other sex. We heard about this a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, and he blackmailed the schools. He said he will take away the federal funding if they don't. Mm -hmm. And 12 states in the United States took him to court. Mm -hmm. Then the government changed and that was repealed. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but there are series, they, they use every kind of pressure. Mm -hmm. They're serious about their agendas. Mm -hmm. They're serious about yeah, it. Yeah. We have to become serious yeah, too. Yeah. Otra pregunta. Como socióloga, me gustaría... Another question. As a sociologist, I would like to know your opinion. Is there gender dysphoria or are there trans uh, people in primitive societies, such as, uh, for instance, uh, Aboriginal in Australia or uh, African tribes, or is this just a problem of Western society? Okay. I was in Australia and there were people from Samoa and so on and this, they have this tradition in their culture mm -hmm. and their myth of this androgenity. Uh, so this is an issue, mm -hmm. yeah, all through, all through the history uh, of man, but now we see a cultural attack mm -hmm. and we have heard all the specialists on these issues and I think we have really been nourished with substantial food uh, to get the, have the right knowledge. Thank you. Um, mm. What role is played by UNICEF in gender ideology and abortion? It's all for uh, comprehensive sex education. So stop buying their lovely Christmas cards. <laughs> uh, all the UN sub-organizations are for it. I mean, the World Health Organization put out the standards of sexuality education, yeah? Uh, and don't be deluded. They, they all present it as humanistic and we are so much for the child the right of the child, be aware of this. The, this policy in the UN for the rights of the child has no other intention but breaking the child away from the, their parents, from the authority of the parents. That is what they, what they are after. And of course we want rights for the child. We love children, don't we? We are bought them by the millions, but we love children. Yeah? Uh, so uh, be aware, and if you hear from the UN rights of the child, the intention is to break the child out of the authority, the loving care of their parents and their family. Thank you. A couple of more questions. Um, we're running out of time. Um, the Alicia Rubio. Alicia Rubio asked the following question. Children are being hypersexualized. They're being perverted. And uh, pedophilia is uh, being depathologized, but uh, this is uh, something alarming for parents. How can we reach parents? How can we awaken a society that is asleep? Well, to do that, uh, if you're, if we look at schools, I think a strategy would be to engage in the school, to take parental responsibility, their positions of parental, uh, uh, positions for parents to, to have a voice in the school, uh, to actually be visible in school as somebody who is uh, taking responsibility and working for the good of everybody, and then inform, find colleagues, find other parents, and you show the material, you invite them, and you know, invite them to an evening and show, did you know this is happening? Did you know this is the toys they are getting? Did you know that they, are, that they are, uh, have co uh, private corners in kindergarten where they, can, uh, they are encouraged to have sex plays? Did you know all this? And do we really want this? You have to be creative and imaginative. And I want to give you one, well, we can only, one advice, so to speak, ask, if you are a Christian, if you are a person who prays, 
always ask for the Holy Spirit for guidance. Because Jesus says we need the wisdom of the dove, the gentleness of the doves, and the slyness of the snakes. That's what mm -hmm. Jesus says. We are not naive. We don't just jump into it and open our mouth at every occasion. It's not so easy to discern. And so if we get into a habit of asking the Holy Spirit for guidance, I think this is really the only way for wisdom in this battle. <clears throat> Thank you very much, uh, Gabriel. So um, and you, over, you already answered this, but if you want to just your, your last words um, on, on this question. Um, Where can we start? today, this afternoon, tomorrow, in our own environment, the, to counteract this sexual revolution? And how far should we get in this struggle to raise our voice about truth? Repeat what I just said. OK, OK, <laughs> which is okay. very strong. Thank you. Thank you very Gracias. much. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you.